on everybody welcome back to the channel today we're going to be installing this ie catch can on this mark 7.5 gti and i'm going to be going through why you need to do this to your mark 7 and the benefits that follow it so what exactly is a catch can and why do you need one there's multiple benefits to having a catch can firstly it stops oil buildup on top of the valves which is like the number one reason why you would go with the catch can. And over time, oil just accumulates and can reduce your engine's performance. Secondly, it catches any unnecessary blow-by, uh, this being oil vapors that escape the engine and could potentially cause, cause issues. All right, first things first, obviously remove your cover. We're gonna go ahead and get to this first. So what you have to do is remove the connectors to the spark plug um, coil, packs. coil packs but you don't have to remove all of them we're only going to be removing coil pack number three on cylinder three just so we can get access to this area right here now if you do have trouble getting the top nut off this what i recommend is grabbing a 10 millimeter and shaving it down like we did right here just take a grinder so you can get it underneath there and um, if you don't do that, it'll actually spin and you can rip the ground and you'll have a bad time. like us we kind of ripped the uh, ignition coil it's pretty prone on these cars so if it happens to you just buy a new one or if you could somehow get it out and fix it go ahead and do that but now we're gonna use a t30 Torx bit and we're gonna take off the uh, factory PCV valve system and this will be replacing it paired with our AN fittings to our catch can So once you've cracked all these loose, you're gonna see the PCV connector that goes to the turbo. We, what we did is just unbolted it and popped it off. Now, before putting that into the new system, make sure the O-ring is clean and put a little oil on there to loop it up. That's free. Okay. There should be seven T30 Torx bits. Now we got them all loosened up. Now it's free. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. All right, so we got it off. You actually have to pull out coil pack number four too. It was getting snagged right here. Uh, they only said number three in the instructions, but you're probably going to have to pull that one out too, unless you somehow force it out. So this is the gasket we're going to have to reuse. Make sure you do not rip this and go ahead and cover that because you do not want anything to fall on top of your cams because this is literally straight open to your engine bay. So make sure you put a towel over and make sure it's covered. Successfully removed our gasket. Now our second step is to put this vacuum um, adapter on and this will actually go on the top side right here and this will connect into our factory plug right here so you're gonna have to put Teflon tape on this because it is a vacuum seal or you'll need it to be a vacuum seal so we're gonna have to go ahead and wrap this and make sure you orient it facing upwards like this or at a slight angle and they also said to uh, snug it do not over tighten it because it may strip these threads or the threads in that aluminum Going anywhere we could go further, but we don't want to so it's good where it's at. All right, so what we're doing uh, We kind of messed around with this so on the factory PCV little box there's ribs on this and It's a much tighter tolerance. So the ribs stick into the plastic on this, it's machined to 
uh, thicker tolerance or there's a lot more wiggle room. So what we did is put some grease on there just to get the gasket to stay and then we'll wipe whatever excess off. So we'll see if this works and I'll let you know because we were just like messing around and the gasket kept falling off. And you definitely don't want that on top of your motor when there's oil that could shoot out and cause a fire. So this is super important. All right, so we're using some WD-40 contact cleaner on a paper towel. We're just gonna wipe down that surface to make sure there's no little rocks or oil or grease on there because you want a super flat surface when putting that gasket back on. We'll just go ahead and do a quick wipe down on all the little areas. All right, so now we're gonna install the M5 by 1.25 hardware. Now there's seven um holes but we're actually gonna uh, use six of these small ones and then they give us one large one for that so we're gonna protect the aluminum and into a problem it looks like they gave us too long of a bolt to fit in here which doesn't make any sense why they would do that but we're gonna have to trim this because they may have accidentally receded this aluminum too much and the bolt actually bottoms out all the way before it even hits that recession inside there. So if you guys run into that, maybe contact IE and ask them what's up because that's definitely not right. But other than that, the part seems to be fine, but that's kind of annoying that we have to go out of our way to cut that. All right, I just wanna show you guys. So this is the bolt they gave us. So we're gonna screw it all the way in. The plate is straight, but look, this is all the way bottomed out. I can't twist it anymore. And it actually is wiggling inside the, the hole, which is not right. So that means that recession is too far down for the, the bolt head. All right, so we literally took a little bit off but that's pretty much all you needed unless there was something wrong with the head of that which I highly doubt but now it seems to be working so we took off that little amount it threads in and it cinches the plate down all right there doesn't seem to be a torque spec that I saw um, but if we find one I'll put it on the screen so pretty much do a cross pattern because this is aluminum this is your top side of your motor uh, treat it like a spark plug just snug it up and then we'll go back and do a little tighten on, tighten on all of them. Okay, so I cleaned the O-ring a little bit with just some degreaser. Damn, that is so hot right now, just by placing it on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that back in, make sure it seats. It's plastic, so I just don't want it to move. All right, good. So now that we've assembled everything, gaskets on there, got our PCV little vacuum hose on there now we're going to go ahead and put the check valve in so there's a directional check valve that they provide and you want the arrow going from the line to the breather on top and if you get this wrong you could have some problems with this sensor or valve not working right so if that happens to you go ahead and check your valve and make sure you put it in right okay so re-looking at or re-analyzing this check valve uh, we may have gotten it wrong, but it's pretty confusing when you read the directions on there. I'll read them to you word for word. It says, take care to install the check valve correctly. Arrow on the check valve, which we do not have an arrow on here, should be pointing towards from the breather. Towards from the breather? <laughs> what do you mean towards, towards from the from. breather? Towards from? Is that forward? Towards? Like towards? From? Like you get a forward and a backwards all up. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? At once. So we're a little confused so there. We'll get a picture of that in the... Yeah. But, since this seems to be a fuel line right here, this is probably fuel vapor. So the whole point of the catch can is to catch vapor and oil. So, re reanalyzing this check valve, we want the fuel vapor to go in and not go back into the system. 
So we're going to be installing it blow through from the sensor into the uh, the breather plate. So if we are wrong, please let us know. We'd like to know. If IE is watching this, please let us know. It's very confusing and probably a lot of questions on this that never get answered. So someone answer this for us. But this is how we're going to do it. So like I said, if we're wrong, let us know. Yeah. So we're going to run what they gave us. Now we removed the uh, existing hose like you guys saw. So we're going to, we may need to put a little hawk two on it to get it on there properly. That hawk two. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cut this, put the valve on and get it situated. And you can't even slip a zip tie over this. Look at that. <laughs> the rubber's too thick to even fit all the way on there. You like, all right, supplied zip tie. No fitty. <laughs> okay, so now the, the moment you guys have been waiting for, it's actually time to install the catch can. So first things first, you got your AN fittings. Um, now they say, to wrap some sealing tape on the NPT side. So this side actually goes into the catch can and then the A inside is the side with the little bevel right there. And that will make a seal without any tape. So don't put any tape on this, only put tape on this side. And then our bracket supplied right here. We'll bolt onto the, these three little Allens and then it's going to bolt right here with a little spacer included. So I, or we taped up the drain valve, installed it, um, and then we in, uh, put the AN fittings on, NPT side in with the threaded tape. So this is how it's going to be sitting in the car. Now you want this 90 degree fitting to 90 degree fitting, and then this line will go to the actual breather plate. And then before you snug this up and get it all tight, we're going to actually install the catch can onto the car and then we'll go ahead and button up this side. Definitely my uh, designated AN fitting tool. Proper one. No person. Yep. Right, first. So I'm just tightening the bracket for the catch can. Okay. So all these are tightened up. Now, um, it's gonna. This is gonna be easy for you. Um, so what you're gonna do for the NPT eight to AN. Get it at like a 45 degree angle, and that's gonna give you the right angle for this 90. It's gonna route all the way up. The line is literally gonna wanna go to this. It doesn't, can't be forced over there. This can't be forced over there. I'll double check with you guys. But pretty much we snugged everything up, got this bracket on. You've got these lines supporting the can as well. It's kinda hard to get your hand under there to get the valve to open. Um, and another thing is where the oil is going to go, it's probably going to drain down the frame. So we're going to have to clean that every time we drain it or somehow put a little fitting on there that drains to the floor. Um, but other than that, this is the install. Hope This should probably only take an hour for you guys, but obviously it took us longer because we're videoing. But if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead, drop a like, subscribe, and comment. If you saw anything we did wrong or saw what we liked, let me know. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.